It's episode 10, I'm having a beer. You knew I was still gonna have it in a cup though, right? G'day guys, thank you for tuning in to the 10th, the 10th episode of Cup of Tech. I can't believe it's already been 10 weeks that I've been doing this. Something new, a bit of news for you guys, instead of just giving you reviews every now and then. Yes, I'm having a celebratory beer because I think I think it's the right moment to do so. There's no real celebratory coffee now, is there? So it's going to go with a beer. Now, last week, spoke a lot about a lot of things. Obviously, the phone throwing was a big one. I haven't had a chance to do it, guys. It's just been absolutely flat out where you guys haven't had a chance. A lot of you wanted to help and, and join in and actually throw a, <clears throat> throw a phone with me as well. It's going to be really hard to organize. I mean, some of you guys aren't even from Australia. So I want to do it. Um, I will try and film it when I do it. And if it gets enough attention, maybe we can actually organize a real event around this. Who knows? Maybe a Australia's own phone throwing competition. Cheers. So much news again this week. In fact, the IFA conference is on, so there is way too much news to even fit into the show. Real quick though, Samsung versus Apple, as always. However, in the US, they actually reached a verdict. Now, it did, went completely against Samsung, um, having to pay about a billion dollars to Apple. Now, when some of the jury have been speaking to the media, one of the key reasons that they said that they found Samsung guilty was that prior to the iPhone, Samsung phones looked really boring and really nothing like the iPhone now. Whereas post iPhone, they noticed smartphones with Android, which actually had that similar look and feel. And to them, that was enough to just be convinced. Time, sorry guys, you copied Apple. So, you know what, I'm not even going to harp on it anymore. That case is shut. Obviously, there's still cases all over the world, and there'll probably still be appeals and so on. So, uh, that's that much. Like I said before, IFA conference in Berlin. Uh, amazing, amazing things going on already. Samsung, I woke up at 3 a.m. this morning, so I'm a little bit tired. If I'm looking a little bit run down, I'm sorry. Um, 3 a.m., Galaxy Note 2. Now, I have reviewed the Galaxy Note 1, and to be honest, I absolutely loved it. To me, it was one of... It was such a good phone because it was a huge size. Because you know what? I don't hold the phone to my ear anymore that much. Um, if I'm using the phone, it's usually on Bluetooth, and I'm using it for emailing more and tweeting and things like that. So I don't really care how big the phone is, and the bigger the screen, the better for web browsing videos and so on. So the Note 2 has been announced. Something I'm really excited about. It really is similar to the S3 in terms of specifications, what's inside the phone. It is a 5.5-inch screen, so I'm oh, dying to actually see it. They've made a few key improvements, um, but on the on the inside, very very S3 like. Some of the new features that they've put into the phone, which which got me quite excited, the S Pen has been updated a little bit thicker, so it actually feels like a real pen. Now, one thing that they're doing is it's like a beam. So what they're saying is you can take the pen out, and as you start holding it close to certain items or folders on the phone, it starts to interact with it as well. So, say for example, in your gallery, you've got folders, all these different folders, and you don't really know what's in them. You can just point at it with your with your S Pen, and it will actually start to expand the folder and give you a preview of what's inside. And it'll do that for your inbox, it'll do that for your calendar, and so much more. Really, really smart and innovative idea. One other feature which I really loved, I won't go over the whole phone, but Photo Note. So remember back in the days, well not back in the days, not so long ago, we used to get photos processed, we'd take them home, we'd write on the back, Christmas 2001, Jeff opening his present. Well, you can actually do that on the note. So you can take your picture on screen, flip it over, and scribble something on the back and save it. So next time you go back, you might have a story behind it or a moment that you had to know about. Boom, there's your photo note. How good is that? Another piece of news was the Galaxy camera. Now, what this camera is, is like the one I'm using almost, it's a compact camera which is a Galaxy S3 on the inside. I think Samsung has really noticed that people like the S3 and they're just going to build it into most of their devices from here on in. Now the Galaxy camera is like what I spoke about last week with the Nikon um, camera with, which runs Android. This runs full S3 OS, looks just like, just like the S3 in terms of menus and things like that. However, it's got a 16 megapixel sensor and a 21 times optical zoom, I think. So really cool, they're, co they're kind of saying it's more of a premium camera. So I'm a little bit worried, in fact, to see what the price point will be because I wouldn't want to spend $500 on a, on a phone plus camera sort of device. I think I actually prefer the, the camera to be with real camera software. I'm not sure how much I'm enjoying the idea of Android being on there and what sort of value I'd really get from that. I don't know if it's gimmicky. I obviously will try and get one one day to review it. 
We'll see. Also, Windows 8. There is so much happening with Windows 8. It's so close to coming that you can feel it. You can, you can taste it. It's, it's in my cup. Windows 8 is coming. Samsung acknowledged that by releasing a whole list of devices, a huge list of devices. Now, things from hybrid laptops or tablets, so you know, your tablet with the dock, they've got a fair few of those coming. So obviously some new laptops as well, a, just a tablet, Windows 8 tablets, and obviously the Windows 8 phones. Now what they're calling that whole range is ATIV, 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 however you want to pronounce it, ATIV. So I'm going to say this, I'm going to say that they had the word native because they want the same OS to be native across all of these devices. And they dropped the N and dropped the E because it wasn't cool enough. So they're calling it the ATIV range and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a crappy name. You notice the cup? Oh, you haven't noticed the cup. Maybe you have. It's a Sony cup. Sony sent me a thing because they're having a, a bit of a launch today, which they did as well. So yeah, got up at 3 a.m. and then did a little 10 a.m. thing as well, which was riveting with coffee. Needed it. Now, they've released a TV, which I thought, what? 84 inches. So 84 inches is what this wall is behind me, plus, plus, plus. 84 inches is huge. It's mind-blowing. I have a 50-inch TV, and I thought that was big. And I've kind of got used to it, but 84 inches, you be mad. So 84 inch, it's a 4K TV. Real quick thing about 4K, when HD TVs first came out, you had 720p and then you had 1080p. What's happening with these new ultra high definition TVs? There's 4K and then there's going to be 8K as well. So I'm picturing the 4K as the 720p TV. So what you need to remember is this, this TV is going to come out Guns blazing, 84 inches, 4K, the world will freak out. But remember, it is not going to be the higher end of the ultra high definition TVs. Sony will eventually release an 8K TV and that will be the one that you want because when they start looking at the new Blu-ray and whatever else they're gonna start calling these formats, the highest scale is 8K. And if you buy a 4K TV for 15 grand, you might regret it later. But you know what? If you can afford a $15,000 TV, you probably don't care anyway. So go and buy it and then boast to your friends they've got an 84 inch TV. Again, I think Sony sort of feels a little bit small in some certain areas because they've come out with a tablet. Well, it's kind of a tablet. I'm going to call it a hybrid again. It's 20 inches. So it's the screen. I don't have anything which is 20 inches in front of me except my monitor which I can pick up. But anyway, they have this, this tablet. So imagine a 20 inch device running Windows 8 which looks really cool and feels great. It's a touch screen, runs on its own battery, but it's got Bluetooth. So you've got your Bluetooth keyboard, Bluetooth mouse, and the tablet, or the, the screen if you want to call it, has a kickstand. So you're kicking this, this tablet out upright, you can sit at your desk and it feels like you're using a PC. It feels like those all-in-one computers that we had, or even ones that I reviewed before. But, you fold that kickstand down, and you've now got a 20-inch table mat, basically, where you can put something in front of the kids, get four kids around it, and there's your Monopoly board. I mean, you think about it, developers, they can take this device, develop some cool apps for it, it runs Windows 8, so you know they can, and imagine board games, imagine painting, imagine anything, you want to get the kids in front of it, here you go kids, here's a 20 inch piece of screen, get crazy, Get do whatever you like, but don't break it. If you, or you know somebody who has a motorbike, or rides a horse, or wears a helmet for any particular reason, maybe they just want to dress up like the Stig on weekends, have asked them the question about their helmet. How clean is it? I mean, how do they really know it's clean? That, that funky smell you get after a summer of riding? What is that smell? And are you worried about it? I'm not about hygiene. I'm not going to hear to preach, mate. This is a tech show. So what does that have to do with it, Jeff? Get, get on with that. So this product, which I saw during the week from Sharp, it's a... I need to, I need to read this to pronounce it right. It is a... God, where is it? A plasma cluster device. So what it does, and you need to see it on the website, imagine you have this little tiny box and you place your helmet over the top and what it does is actually purifies and cleans the air and kills all the odors and all the germs and bacteria inside your helmet. So that way when you put it on, it's fresh and it's beautiful. When I spoke to them about it, I said, well, what? Like, what? This is just too weird. So they explained it to me simply. When I go to the rainforest, because I do that all the time, if I was to go to a rainforest, you, you know the smell, the smell's different. When you start going to the wilderness or away from the city, the smell's different in the air, it's thicker, it's denser, it's almost, it's almost wet. So what they're saying is that this 
The reason that is the case is because the air is cleaner, it's, it's free of pollution and bacteria and the whole lot. So this device actually creates that. So imagine if you had this device and all of a sudden you pick up your helmet and it's, mmm, it smells like a, a rainforest. That's cool. Guys, last thing, obviously I'd love to ask you guys a question because I want to keep it interactive. I want you to respond to me. Two things. One, do you enjoy the show? Should I keep doing it? Do you like the fact that I'm standing now? I have a tripod, so I thought I'd stand. Secondly, the big one, emoticons. I'm 26. 26. And back in my day, and even today, the way I use emoticons is like a semicolon, the two dots, and a closed bracket is a smile. And a sad face is the same thing, but with the other bracket. Whereas today, I've learnt that there is this other one, and it actually comes from Asia, and it's more like, it's more like Braille. I saw someone use it, and it's like, imagine this is an angry face. So it's like a full stop, a dash, and another full stop, and that's an angry face. Or a happy face is two of those arrows which point up. That's a happy face. What is that? Tell me, I mean, are you guys using these emoticons? Am I the only one who thought it was weird when I saw that? I'll type them up on screen so you can see it, but these things are weird, and I'm confused because I'm used to, like, you know, the dots and the brackets and the poking tongue is, you know, the dots and the P. Simple stuff. Oh, and the other things is people who use the smiley face and the sad face the other way around. So they'll start it with an open bracket and the two dots as if it's a smile like this, like, eh, but that's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like this, eh. That's how you're meant to do it. So emoticons got me a little bit mm, confused. I don't know if I'm really old. Maybe I'm old. How young are you? Are you using these things? I don't know. Should I be adapting to new emoticon technology? Let me know. Thanks for watching the show. See you next week on another cup of tech. Bye.